So, I mean, maybe that's a good segue to, to Eval's uh, presentation on how should we be working to improve CTO PCI outcomes. When we look at this, the trials we just discussed, the Euro CTO trial was done, the PCI was done by um, trained operators. So if we want to extrapolate that to the PCI community, I think we at least should educate people to do the CTO in a safe manner because uh, it's the balance between the, the risk when you put the patient on, when you do the procedure, and then the benefit. Uh, so I think we have, um, we have to educate the, the society. So how do, we, this is very simple, H how do we do that? You have to train your, a team. So I think in your t if you have a team that should be set up in a hospital want to start a CTO program, I think you should in identify two CTO operators in the team and let the two operators work together because they share experience and they get more volume load on the CTO procedures by standing two together and, and just standing one operator. And the CTO operator should attend courses like the course we are going to have today and tomorrow. And um, you should use proctors. There's no idea that you should invent everything yourself in your cath lab. Bring in an experienced operator and uh, learn from them. And you should train uh, the operator, the doctors in your cath lab to do adequate angiograms. I think we see a lot of angiograms that are not uh, sufficient to uh, do a good planning for the CTO procedure. So it's not only training two people, it's, it's the whole team that should be trained and they should also be accepting that you have a CTO program. You should have acceptance from the, your colleagues, from the whole department that the, you in the beginning invest. You may block a cath lab with two procedures for one day in the beginning and then you become quicker and you should have acceptance from your hospital, from your region, and from the whole system. That and also it's important to have uh, the right stuff on the shelf. You should have two dedicated persons that secure you, that you have all the, the devices that you need. If you're in a procedure and you, you're in lack of a dedicated device and you cannot f finalize the procedure, it's a very, it's a pity. So also have two nurses on board. <coughs> and uh, I should also say something what I consider a center of excellency. I think it's a, a center in the region that has the most skillful and experienced CTO operators. And in this center, you should have all the dedicated devices available. I think also a center like that should be involved in uh, developing new and testing new devices. So I think all of you have tested new devices and say, this is not an improvement, we don't need it. And sometimes new devices come and say, okay, this helps me. If you are a center of excellence, you should arrange workshops for your region and. Uh, take care of the education in collaborating hospital that may refer patients to you and also get referrals for the most complicated cases. You should also try to proctor your region and uh, educate and also um, participate in studies so we can generate the evidence. We may have one study, randomized study now that uh, show benefit in quality of life, but if we have if you have the 1A indication for CTOP, we need another randomized trial showing this. So I think we should also um, take care of that, that we generate the evidence for doing what we are doing. And then if you are a center of excellence, I think also it's important that you will accept that people from other places come to you and work in your cath lab for maybe a month or two. So you take, uh, take care of education in all the CTO community and not uh, only your own department. So this is just what I put on the, the slides for, uh, for discussion with you. What do, you. what do you think about that? So Eva, how much of that ideal have you managed to achieve in our house? Well, he's achieved all of it. Has he? Yeah. You're all it's over it, Eva. Fantastic, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, uh, we do the workshops. And I think, uh, yeah, this, this may be what uh, I think we should be <coughs> doing. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's done in all your centers, I but guess. You know, but I, th well, I, I think so, but I think the most uh, important sort of thing that you raised, Eivald, is generating the evidence and actually having the, uh, well, the spine or the uh, wherewithal to randomize patients. I mean, within um, the context of PCI versus cabbage and all the rest of it, I mean, we've seen Noble come out, we've seen a, lo a lot of things come out. But you have to actually believe in what you're doing, but commit to randomization. Mm. And if you're not prepared to actually put patients into clinical studies and understand what the outcomes are, 
I think you're deluding yourself and you're deluding the rest of the community. So I, I think that's crucially important. But the, there also are two very important things which you touched on, Eagle. One is the support network that you've described. And what you've described is that these procedures are technically challenging. They're challenging for operators. They're challenging for systems to deliver. And you've described a support network which helps deliver that both on an individual patient level or, 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 or hospital level but also in a very responsible way uh, within a network. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, whilst you hold this up as a center of excellence or an ideal, the broader picture is how you deliver uh, excellence within a, a network that can't, you know, for example, not everyone can be like our house with two world-class CTO operators. So our responsibility extends beyond our, our local network, mm -hmm. but in a more educational leadership role mm -hmm. to your your broader network, and I think you, you did that very well. I think what one experience we have is when younger doctors are visiting other hospitals for working for one year, and they come back and they see that there is treatment options that was not offered in their local hospital. A lot of patients are put on medical treatment. We, we know all the figures that 20% have a CTO and 5% is going to a CTO PTI. So a lot of patients out there that have symptoms, and they are told that there's no treatment options for you. And then this, the doctors come back and say, should we try to uh, put, build our own program or should we refer the patients ultim until we can do them ourselves and go to the hospital? We sometimes have referrals of patients and then the doctors come and we do the treatment together. Yeah, I, I think that's an, an it, very important. I think you know we are living in an information-rich environment. You know, if you go back even 30 years ago, we didn't have the access to working within an international environment that we do now. We have doctors here from Belgium, from Scotland, from Canada, from Ireland, from Denmark, and we're all sharing experiences. And that should accelerate all our expertise. But if we start off with that kind of you know realization that we can't build little silos, we should be building networks. And you've discussed building a support network here, and the reason we're having this discussion is because our support network, we're lucky enough, it extends beyond geographical barriers and is actually an international support network. James, I, I think I, the network yeah, concept is incredibly yeah. important. I, you know, I think our enthusiasm for these procedures um, can mean that we uh, teach a lot of people to do it who end up doing small volumes of it. And we saw very nicely in Recharge the important relationship between the volume and the safety of the procedure. Uh, so the only workaround for that, the only way that we can be enthusiastic and in, in, engage our colleagues, uh, educate the labs that are not doing them, uh, I think, is to find a network solution that makes sense in your own medical environment. And there are many factors that, that will make it make sense or not make sense in relation to physician reimbursement and licensing and all sorts of other uh, external factors. But we need to work in networks. If we try to work as individual labs, we will end up in another five years having a lot of low volume CTO centers, so-called, that are not doing a very good job. I think we have to be careful about that. And, and the network is the solution. Yeah, the, I just wanted to comment on that because it's a completely different situation by country depending on the size of the cat labs which are out mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, for example, we have a decent volume with, with 1,500 PCIs a year, which is even low for a lot of you guys, I think. But this allows a CTO program that is still worth to be run. On the other hand, we want patients to be treated and the lower volume centers, there is a hype there. They, they ask you to come over to, to join them in the procedure or we, we tell them, we prefer them that they will come over as you do to our cat lab and do the procedure together to have that teaching point also what is feasible, what is possible and how it can be done safe. But it still remains an issue there. Those lower volume centers they are interested in doing PCI, in CTO PCI, but at the end of the year they will have they will remain at a low level, low number of, of procedures, and the times they do ADR, the times they do a retrograde procedure will remain low. So the threshold to do so will remain high. So mm -hmm. I, I, I'm it's very struggling. Complex, isn't it? Yeah. I'm uh, struggling a lot with that. It, it's not so easy to to become immediately a re referral center. Yeah. I think we are, in Belgium now we try to build up. We have set up um, 
a network with all the cat labs actually they they all can join us in what we call the belgium working group on cpos so this created the interest and a lot of these guys ask now proctors to come and join them but they prefer to do it locally the disadvantage is again the material and of course that it takes longer to to go through the procedure but at the end it will create some change in their mind that some procedures cannot be done at the end in their cat lab and it would be better to refer them but i am still waiting for that second step it's, it's good to hear we're all we're all heading the same direction i think in this mm. in this arena but we're all finding local solutions we're all struggling with it a bit as yeah. well and yeah. i don't think anybody's got all the answers in it. it's good to hear that you're struggling yeah. a little bit too because i know i struggle with this <laughs> yeah. so listen just i think just in the to, interest well, of well, time to, sorry. to cycle back to, to one point you mean randomization uh, and clinical studies and uh, margaret is involved with the revived uh, basis study uh, which is in ischemic cardiomyopathy with viability and the patients are randomized to uh, revascularization or optimal medical therapy uh, you know it, it, it's always interesting within the context of a multidisciplinary meeting to sit and watch how a discussion goes about those patients. And it's interesting that within the, the group of patients who have complex ischemic heart disease, multivessel disease, and chronic total occlusions, that everybody's very happy to randomize them. But if they've got two type A lesions yeah. and a erect ventricle, everybody wants to put stents yeah. in with absolutely no data to show that, that it's of any benefit whatsoever, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. be it proximal LED, be it whatever. And I, I think, you know, we have to always uh, have a critical eye on where the randomized data come from and, and should collect information on who doesn't go in studies yeah, yeah. and for what reason. And I think whenever we're interpreting courage and all of these other things that we have around there that... Um, we we have to understand that it's it's actually not the majority of people who are in those trials at all, and Aval's right. You know, if you're a committed academic centre of excellence, you have to have the courage to randomise people to studies and to generate the data and and to understand what really makes a difference for patients.